up uh, everything that's in here, but I did talk about most of what's in here. Uh, I didn't really get into the different types of faucets and how they form, but on my videos I do. So make sure that you, you know, if you don't watch the videos, you don't get the full experience that you're supposed to get. You are supposed to be watching my videos or, or you know, studying all the words from the lecture guide. And, but uh, we, did, I did, we did talk about radiometric dating, which is using the half-lives to time uh, how long it's, you know, it's been. Uh, we did talk about there are other dating methods that scientists use. They use ice cores, right? Sediment cores, tree rings, right? Uh, rocks. Uh, 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 they can figure out things from the chemicals which are inside of the rocks. Um, the whole law of superposition, things which are below are older than things which are above, right? Unless there's an intrusion of some sort. Um, you should know what different types of fossils are. You should know what transition fossils are. Fossils that show, like, the progression of life. You should know what missing links are. So sometimes, you know, you don't have all the transitions, you know, because, you know, fossil record is not perfect. So missing link is kind of like something that scientists still haven't found that they're looking for uh, to explain a jump from one thing to the other. And sometimes we predict we're going to find a fossil about this, and we actually do. So that's a cool thing about revolutionary science. You can actually make predictions using it, you know. Um, we did talk about evolution topics in general. For example, that describe the overall pattern of changes in biodiversity throughout the history of life. We talked about that, that there's been an increase. Remember I told you a graph with highs and, and falls like this, right? And then every time there's a fall, it's a mass extinction. But then after a mass extinction happens, it clears up niches. and actually ends up creating even more diversity afterwards because the niches don't split evenly necessarily. We talked about this already in another lecture, just going over really quick. We did talk about how climate change, natural disasters, and continental drift causes uh, evolution because it changes the environments, it changes ocean currents, it changes the rain patterns, it changes where the continent is, which changes the climate, um, it separates organisms, which creates isolation, which is one of the things you need to create different species, right? So these kind of things also create variety by, ch by changing the environments that life lives on, which changes the pressure. If you change the pressure and separate the species at the same time, you're going to create speciation, right? Um, by the way, I like to point this out. Um, evolution is not perfect, you know. It's not a theory that you know explains necessarily everything, but it's the theory that explains the most things about in, bio in biology. But the outer alternative doesn't explain everything. For example, once you and I know I, I sometimes I'm coming off as like someone that's bashing on creationism, and it's not my intention. Uh, my intention is just basically saying like I'm bashing on the bad, the bad, um, bad logic that comes associated with it. So, for example, um, um, when someone says that there's a flood 4,000 years ago, or there's a tree, right, in Scandinavia that's 6,000 years old, you see that there's a problem there. So, how do you how do you conciliate both things? And you say there's a 4,000 year old flood. And yet, you have thousands and thousands of layers of sediments in the Grand Canyon that would take thousands and thousands of years to form with different types of sediment. If it's one flood, why are all the sediments forming in different, different types? It doesn't make any sense. Why are all the animals swimming out to try to survive themselves, which will make you see things like tigers and saber teeth sort of at the same level? Why do we always see a progression to fossil record, but never we see a tiger up here, a tiger down there, and then a saber tooth? You know what I'm trying to say? Or even a saber tooth and a tiger in the same level. That doesn't make sense with the idea of a flood. What about Australia? How do the animals get there in less than 4,000 years with no land bridge? And if they did get there, because, you know, supposedly the ark stopped somewhere in the Middle East, right? So kangaroos must have left the ark because they're still around, or something like a kangaroo, right? And then, and then left the ark and somehow hopped all the way to Australia and left no fossils in between. I really feel what I'm trying to say. There are no kangaroo fossils anywhere else around the world, only in Australia. Why? Because they evolved in Australia. Does that make sense? Right? Uh, there's many other pieces of evidence. For example, if you think about... Um, uh, that, okay, so creationists are like against the idea of the, of the evolution of new kinds. For example, that all of these are basically humanoid skulls from which uh, we share ancestors with. Right? So they, are, they, are, they understand that there's no, that doesn't happen. You could have maybe... You guys learned taxonomy already. So they say you could maybe have new family, a new species, maybe even new genera, but never new family. Now, the interesting thing is if you ask the same kind of people 80 years ago, they would say, no, no new species. But since we've proven that species can evolve because we've seen species evolution, 
Now the insects, no, no, actually, we meant genus. And then biologists show the, uh, the first example of genus evolution in both worms and in plants in the 1980s. So now they say, actually, no, we don't mean genus, we mean, we mean family. You're never going to get evolution, create a new family of life. So you see the problem there, you keep changing your definition of kind. Are you I'm trying to say? And that's a problem there. Now, <clears throat> so it's really not science when you try to do that, because, you know, you're never satisfied with the evidence. You just reinterpret the evidence to conform with your idea, instead of changing your idea when the evidence is contrary to it. But, let's say there was a, some sort of arc with 7,000... 7,000 uh, kinds of animals in it. And, and then, today, we have millions of species, right, from those 7,000 kinds. That would mean that in less than 4,000 years, you got to get from 7,000 to 16 million kinds. Are you with me? That means every day, 20 species would be showing up, if you do the math. To go from 4,000, from 7,000 to 16 million in 4,000 years, you need to, to have a rate of 20 new species a day. So biologists today will be finding species, new species all the time, you know, at that kind of crazy rate. So if you just sat there watching a species of a gorilla, they would probably evolve that fast. So it's kind of funny because you're against evolution, and yet the only thing that could possibly explain it is some sort of crazy fast evolution, which we don't see. So... You know, it doesn't make sense. And that's the thing about science that, the matter, that, that I'm looking forward to for you guys understanding. That when you uh, hear fantastic stories, you know, you have to say, where is the evidence that backs that up? Science has evidence. And that's why we teach science in school, right? Now, this things here, if we know uh, a few more things we did talk about, that we are living in a current six mass extinction, perhaps, right? Uh, it is caused by us instead of other, which were caused by other natural events. However, we are natural. We are part of the world. So in a way, we are a natural disaster. We talked about this already when we did ecology. Uh, these are key terms you should know. I'm going to highlight a couple that we did not talk about and a few that we did talk about. We did talk about adaptive radiation. That's a series of speciation events, right, that causes species to split from one to several, by several splits happening, right? We did talk about co-evolution, two species putting pressure on each other, like a... Uh, a, a, a butterfly in the flower that it that it the pollinates, or the the prey and the predator, or the the host and the and the, and the parasite. They put pressure. They evolve really close together because they are in constant pressure of each other. Punctuated equilibrium are fast, quick uh, evolutionary steps. For example, scientists believe that uh, there may, may have been a, a punctuated equilibrium event in human evolution in recent years, because. Data suggests, and this is something that you shouldn't trust me, you should look it up on Google, all right? especially googlescholar.com, where you can find research articles instead of like news, which get the information from the articles and change it into their own words, and sometimes bias what the author is actually saying. You're going to read the, the actual article by the scientists, you can see what they're trying to say. But there's actually research that suggests that we are living longer not only because of medicine, not only because of lab, better sanitation, and then... And, 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 and uh, things like that. But there have, may have been a genetic, epigenetic change that's causing us to die slower since the Middle Ages. So that, that's a big example of punctuated equilibrium, a quick evolutionary change. Uh, Divergent evolution. What is that? That you should need to know. It's important. It's going to be see for sure. So let me see. By the way, the these are presented people who have notes for this topic. Nobody else has notes for the topic. That's it. I right? just make sure. If you have notes, you put the thing over here. If you do not have notes, you put it over there. All right, so Nimrod, what do you think the word divergent evolution means? All right, so if this was the OC, you're not doing well. you got to know this. It's up there. It's, it's going to be in your test. You're going to research it. Sasha, what is divergent evolution? You know what it is? Think about the word divergent. What does it sound like? See, that is to diverge. What does that mean? To split. Okay, so what kind of evolution that is? when one organism splits to several, oh, yeah. right? But they will share a lot of characteristics in common, homologous structures, because they have the same ancestor. Convergent evolution, what does that sound like? Now, what that is, is when two different species have similar characteristics, not because they share a common ancestor that has that characteristic, but because they have similar pressure. Give me an example of that. Yes? A bat and a bird. A bat and a bird both have wings. What is structure? 
shows evidence of a convergent evolution. What kind of structure? Yes. See, if you're not at this level where you can answer questions like this, you're not going to be ready for the test. The test is coming, all right? It's very soon, right? So make sure you study for it. It's like December 4th. Seems like far away, but it's not, right? So you should be adding to your daily routine of study, which it continues. The class is going to keep going. You should be doing a test. You should also be working on the timeline, right? And you should be working on that test, okay? On studying for the test. And today is the first day of classification. What does that mean? Not, not other than that. When you go home today, what are you supposed to do? Water properties. Water properties. Exactly. My lecture series is really good on this one as well. Okay, so make sure you, you study for water properties. So there's three things on your work docket right now. You, you're doing the timeline, you're reviewing for the evolution test, and you're studying for water properties. Now, for the evolution test, just like last time, do workbook chapters, which are associated with evolution, right? Do, uh, there's a study guide. If you go to review, there's a folder called review, right? In the unit files. If you go in that folder, there's a folder called notes. And then in there, which I'm going to send on Sally, probably to today, there's a file somewhere that's like evolution theory uh, unit study guide. It's written by, Dr. by Mr. Ramos from last, from last year. And he has a really good study guide that, about everything that's supposed to be in the test. All right? That's not going to help you with the free response questions, which are the red key terms, right, for, for, the, for the other stuff. So make sure you, you study that stuff as well. Um, there's practice questions that you can practice with on the each le uh, guided lecture question that I used to teach in class. There's multiple choice questions on each one of them. There's also the, the self-testing folder for each topic under evolution and classification has in there a uh, chapter test and a standardized practice test and some quizzes that you can take to see if you know things. You should not be here not knowing what these words are. If you are, you're not going to do all the tests. You're going to make sure you know this. So again, this is two important ones. It's going to show up in the EOC for sure. Convergent evolution. Madison, what was convergent evolution again? I just said it. Where were you? All right. Convergent evolution. What is that? What does it sound like, converge? Okay. So obviously you're not going to have two species becoming one. That's not what they're talking about. Not that, not exactly. It's when two separate species that do not share a common ancestor that has a certain characteristic, both end up with a certain characteristic because of common pressure. And that characteristic that shows convergent evolution is called analogous structure. What's divergent evolution? Yes? Splits into? But these two will have a lot of things in common because they have a common ancestor. What are those things in common called? Homologous structure. All right, so analogous structures, see how it makes an A? Analogous structures show evidence of convergent evolution. So structures which are not shared by the common ancestor, but are shared because of common pressure. All right? Okay, we also have to know what vestigial structures and mosaic structures are. All right, you also see here, it, how is it possible for evolution to create get a complexity over time because it builds on itself, right? It's little by little. One step today, another step tomorrow, another step tomorrow, but each day can be millions of years, right? And thousands of generations. So it's one mutation after the other. Most of the mutations will be what? Bad. But once in a while, a good mutation comes and adds something new that's actually good. Now, this is very important. If I need a mutation to survive something, do I get a mutation because I need it, or do I have to sit there and wait for a random mutation to occur to happen? Which way is the way that goes? So the environment is putting pressure for more intelligence. Does that mean a specific mutation for good intelligence shows up? Or does it automatically or randomly show up someday and then it gets selected for if it shows up? How does it work? The first way or the second way? Second. The second way. This is very important. Just because you need something, it doesn't mean it shows up. Are you with me? It would be nice if we fly or we don't fly because it takes a lot of mutations for that to happen and then it hasn't happened. Are you with me what I'm trying to say? So that's kind of how it works. Okay, now, evolution is not goal-oriented. What does that mean? Not yes? It means that like, we're not trying to get to a certain goal to be better. It's just more beneficial to be... At the time that you're talking about. I mean, we used to have odd features in us that we don't use anymore, like right vestigial structures. But why were they there? Because at one point, 
then we use them, right? And so what is advantageous changes over time because, you know, climate change, natural disasters, continental drift, other reasons. By the way, it's not just selection. It could be drift. It could be uh, G flow. It could be mutations. Other things cause things to evolve. Now, but the point is this process is a bit random in the sense that the changes that appear are random mutations. It's not random that the selection of those mutations is not random, right? But there is no point. There's no goal. There's no purpose. There's not like you're trying to get somewhere or that the goal all along was to make intelligent humans. In fact, you could make the argument that we're not the best that's around, all right? What is the most dominant life form in this planet? Try to guess. If you watch, if you study classification correctly, you should know. Forget insects. Yes, they beat us for, for, by far, but I'm not talking about insects. The most dominant type of life in this planet, bacteria. So really, who does the world belong to? To humans? To bacteria, right? In fact, your own body is not human because this body has billions of human cells and 10 times, 100 times more bacteria living cells in it. Your skin is littered, covered with bacteria. Your intestines are covered with bacteria. Your insides of bacteria everywhere. Your teeth, everywhere you touch inside of a human is full of bacteria. The air is full of bacteria. The tables are full of bacteria. The floors are bacteria. The wind has bacteria in it. Bacteria is everywhere in this planet. It's by the volcanic vents. It's by the bottom of the ocean. Right? Now, of course, it's not the same bacteria. We, we are perhaps the species which is, uh, which is one of the most, most diversely spread out species in that sense. Are you with me? But E. coli, a specific type of bacteria that lives in the intestines of all animals, right? All, ma all higher mammals have E. coli inside of them. And then that's even more widespread in humans because it's not just in the humans, it's in every... Are you with me? So if you think about it, we're not the, the thing. And if actually, who you think is more resilient? If there was a nuclear holocaust, you think it would kill all the E. coli? No, no but it, it might kill us. Are you with me, I'm trying to say? So that means, who's better then? Really? Yeah. Well, remember, that's not the way evolution typically works. When we talk about who's better, who's going to survive, survive the fittest, we're talking about a survival within a population. It's the best of the population that lives on by some of the genes. But there's also a kind of species selection where one species fights another. But we're not typically fighting bacteria for survival. We don't, we don't fight for the same niche with them. Are you with me? But if we were, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. But if you were fighting for the same niche, you know, who knows if we're going to be the best ones. At one point, we beat other ones. We coexisted with two types of homos, right? There was one in the Philippines that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. And there was uh, the Neanderthals that went extinct 40,000 years ago. But the homo sapiens started about, you know, we learned the last time, about 300,000 to 100,000 years ago about. It is still around today. It beat the, the Neanderthal in, in uh, Europe. Neanderthals went extinct, but we didn't, right? So at the end of the last ice age, they didn't make it, but we did. But does, does that mean that, we, that couldn't be another type of species that could outdo us? No. So we are absolutely not the goal, not the process. And that's a very big difference between this and the other theories of, of uh, origin, right? Now, why evolution cannot make perfection or cannot make things better over time? Why doesn't that even make sense to ask that question? Because we're always changing. Yeah, but why is it not making perfection? Yeah, the Mendel Legos. Why? Okay. Perfection implies what? Think about it. I am perfect. What does that, what does that mean if you were perfect? There's nothing wrong with you. Why doesn't that make sense with evolution, with world, with the natural life? Yes, Felix. Since the world is always changing. Very good. Exactly. So, does it make sense to have a perfect state if tomorrow the world could be different? It's actually very interesting. I, mean, I, I like to make analysis that relate to real life sometimes, so you guys can get this point. But think about this. If we are, um, if we are um, in a relationship, you are, you and in a, in a, your girlfriend are in a relationship, right? One day you're going to hopefully be in one, or maybe you're in one already, but if you have a girlfriend and you find the perfect mate, you're perfect for each other. Everything about you guys is perfect. That's the one I'm going to marry because he's perfect, all right? If you find that, that could, that could exist. Two perfectly matched people, they're so well balanced, it's like awesome. But there's no guarantee it will stay perfect because people can change. People can go through things and change. Are you with me what I'm trying to say? 
Which is why relationships take work. You've got to keep evolving together. Are you with you? Does that make sense? Because nothing is forever. Everything changes. Even the rules of physics were not exactly the same in the beginning of the universe. They have been the same for a very long time. But there's no guarantee they will stay the same forever either. Some scientists believe that the rules of physics could change. So imagine that. Nothing is permanent. But definitely, that doesn't make sense. Also, better doesn't make sense. In even ways, because who's better? The athlete who runs, who breaks the world record of the 100 meters? Or Hussein Bo, yeah, currently. Or uh, a wheel, someone that lives in a wheelchair and uses two fingers but wrote several books about astrophysics. What? Stephen Hawking. Who's better? Wheelchair. Nobody knows. I don't know. I think it depends. If you, if, you, if, if you needed to run from a large animal that was chasing you, Steve Hawkins is going to sit there and talk to the animal about astrophysics? <laughs> Means, meanwhile, Hussein Bolt thinks, I don't have to beat the animal. I just got to beat Stephen Hawking. It's true. Now, does that, you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So, why doesn't the concept of better even make sense? Because it depends on what? It depends on the environment and the time that you're in. Does that make sense? Okay. Having said that, is it possible? This is controversial, but I have to say it. Even though it's being taped. Is it possible that some people are just better than others? Period. Did I just talk about better? That, that implies that in every situation, one person is better than every other person. Is that likely to occur? Not really. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. And even if you are better in most things, there could be that one thing you're bad at that could cause you to die in a situation that somebody wouldn't have. Are you with me? Having said that, on average, is it possible that some members of the species are better than others and surviving more situations than others? That's how evolution works. So the whole statement about all men are created equal, is that true? No. It's actually not true at all. We're not equal. Look at the diversity that we have in life. And not only that, we are better than each other for sure. Not just in certain situations, but there are people that on average are better than others. And that's how hard to comprehend. Uh, I have a friend that teaches here, that in the first day of teaching chemistry uh, in the uh, years ago, he actually said, some of you guys, when you were born, you, you, wouldn't, you weren't going to get A's in this class. And then he got in trouble because he said that to the students. There's nothing wrong with what he said. Some of you guys, when you were born, you were already not going to get an A in this class. It's true. Right? Because, all right? Now, I actually, I got to know you guys a little, hey, I got to know you guys a little bit over the last quarter or so. And I think that actually is not applied to any of you guys. I think every single one of you guys could do it. Could do it. Will all of you guys do it? Not really. I think you could. I've seen one of those clues. Because actually, here's why I know you could do it. Because you will, in less than four years, take much harder classes. And some of you guys will get B, B's and A's on those classes. And if that person could go back in time and take this class again, you'd probably get an A on this class. Are you with me? You just have to grow up to that person to become the person who could get an A in this class. So I wouldn't say that you can't get an A in this class, period. So I think that he went too far when he said that. But he wasn't entirely wrong. Think about it. Can everybody be a Michael Jordan? No. If I tried to play basketball every freaking day of my life for six hours, I couldn't do what he did. I couldn't. He was just more better at it than I was. And accepting that, understanding your limitations and your goods is important. Right? But also... Let's think about what the, the, the creators, do you think that the guys that wrote the Declaration of Independence weren't kind of inherently aware of this when they wrote that? Of course they were. They even, they even had slaves. They knew people weren't equal. All right? So what do they really mean when they said all men are created equal? What do they mean when they said that? What? what did you, who, said it? who said that? Hell yes, give her like six Legos. All right? All right. 
By the way, which American document says this thing? Constitution. No, not the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence. Now, what? By the way, who said it? Who wrote it? Thomas Jefferson, my namesake. Okay? So my namesake wrote this. And what he was actually meant when he said that is that whether or not we are equal, we should be, by law, considered equal. That if, because if you're going to create laws on people, the, uh, we should all have the same rights, is what he says. Even though we're not the same, we should all be treated the same way. We should have the same opportunity, the same things. Is that Darwinian? Does that make sense with biology? No. That's how society and biology are different things. Because society is contrary to what biology teaches. Does that make sense? Yeah. The moment we just follow biology, what are we going to start doing with the weak, the old, and the sick? <laughs> Why? Why take care of them? They're making our species weaker. Does it, right? So you, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but that's not a society I want to live in, right? <laughs> Let it be stated for the record that, that Miss Kalu thinks that we should just end her misery. All right. So, okay, okay. Um, just so you know, I'm your friend. Okay, I like you very much. Uh, but that's the one you're on the good side of, because you know, you know, deep inside she's evil. All right, now, okay, what patterns? Okay, so when we see, when we see patterns, when we do see the patterns, why are the patterns there? So we talked about some patterns of human evolution next class already. We saw that the cranial size is getting larger, right? Why? But I thought there was no go. But I thought there was no point in being better and that better depended on the environment. Because Mutations are random, but why is the ones that make the cranium bigger are being selected for? Because we need more mutations. So why is a pattern there? Because the pressure has been what? Constant. Right? So it means for as long as humanoids have been around, that has to... A bigger brain has been an advantage. Until very recently, I talked about this last class, where we, our brain size actually got smaller because it's disadvantageous to spend a bigger brain. It's more advantageous to fold it more. Right? So we have extra fold instead of a larger brain. Are you with me? Yeah, because well, yeah, at some point, you're going to look like those Martians from, like, you know, like the big brain ones. <laughs> All right? <laughs> All right. So let's complete. So very quickly, I'm going over these. Uh, so the idea is that we came from our original life form, but more recently we came from the same ancestors of these early hominids, right? And which also share ancestors with great apes, right? Now, it's, we split from great apes more than 10 million years ago. The earliest of these, of these, of these, the Australopithecus uh, uh, of that's over here, is almost 8 million years old. So if you talk about gorillas, it's even older than that. Does that make sense? Now, of course, the, the, our common ancestor with gorillas. By the way, we never even came from gorillas. Us and gorillas came from the same thing, right, which looked not like a gorilla or like a human, but something that looked like a little bit of both of us. They, they, we have characteristics. How do I know certain things that our ancestor had? How do I know some things that both us and the gorillas, that ancestor between us and gorillas, how do I know, how do I know the things that it had? No, no, no. If I don't have the fossil, I look at me, I look at the gorilla, how can I tell? The similarities. The homologous structures. DNA, very good. So what kind of things, think about it, what kind of things do both us and gorillas, or the ancestor, whatever that ancestor is, what kind of things should the ancestor have? Opposable thumbs, very good. Give him a legal. What else should the ancestor have? Hair. Hair, absolutely. What else should the ancestor have? Uh, Teeth. Teeth. Eyes? But, but, by the way, you guys are going too far back, because eyes are actually a derived character. Think about it. How long, how long have eyes been around? Since when? Think about something that started with eyes. That's like a, oh, that dates back to flatworms, right? 
So a long time ago. How about something yeah. like, oh wait, how about something like Let's. vocal cords? <gasps> That's been around a while. Don't, can't dogs make sounds? Yeah. Right? But advanced vocal cords that allow you to vocalize sounds in specific sequences to make something like <laughs> Yeah, you think I'm kidding? You think every animal can do that? No. No. Right? Although parrots can do it too. Does that mean parrots have the same ancestor that we have and they that ancestor had vocal cords? No. Or does that is that a, what is that then? Analogous, Analogous structure. Yes. Alright, by the way, parrots don't make the sounds we make the same way at all. They have a very different mechanism of making the same sound. So alright? No, parrots can say, hello, right? I didn't know it. Uh, he wants a cracker. Oh, yes. Oh, Why does he want a cracker? I don't know. Right? And is he talking about a white person that does crack? Uh, or, 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 or is he talking about crackers? I don't know. All right. Or maybe he just wants something to crack nuts. Oh, he wants a cracker. Right? Which doesn't make sense because he has a beak, so then why does he need a cracker for? Does he want a nut cracker? A fire I feel like it needs to be more clear. Okay, so, hey, guys, let's finish this stuff. So, some of the ones we talked about last time, human height, what's been happening to it? Tower, we talked about the advantages, because it makes us see further, reach higher, and intimidation. For the same reason, posture has changed towards a more erect posture, and for that, we became bipedal, and for that, several bone changes have to occur. We talked about changes in our feet, changes in our joints, changes in our hip bones to allow to have more balance. Hip bones also change, by the way, to become a little larger. Why do the hip bones are larger now, especially in women? To carry, uh, so, to carry and support the baby and allow the birth because it has to go through the hip bone. If you look at a hip bone, all right, so Stan couldn't have a baby because his hip bones are too close and so a baby's head could not fit between. All right? Girls, your hip bones are still expanding, which is why it's not a good idea to have a baby before you, before you complete puberty. Because you actually have a problem with birth because you're not there yet. And it's good that it's still expanding because you can, you know, guys like, you know, the big hips. <laughs> but why? Why do guys like the big hips? Because it's a, I don't know, female. It's a secondary sexual characteristic, right? Why? Yes. That's right. You can hold a baby with those hips. You don't like the conversation is going? Where is it going, Catherine? Where is it going, this conversation? What are we, what are we talking about here, people? It's sex. And everything can be explained in terms of that. Oh, shh, quiet. Shh. That bell means half the period has gone by. Shh. Be quiet. And we still haven't started classification. We still have to finish this. All right? All right, we also talked about changes that occur in our hands bones because it's now changed to become a kind of what kind of tool? A grasping tool. Uh, there are changes that occur to the spinal cord. How does the spinal cord change? Oh, uh, this right here. Right, the, it's, it's under, the brain, under the brain instead of behind the brain. Uh, we talked about the disc to support the weight, all these things. Did we talk about larger cranial size? Yes. All right, did we talk about decreased sexual dimorphism? Yes. The fact that males and females are not so different because they share. Now, have you seen sometimes birds of the? Have you seen the female, the female uh, peacock? Yeah. Yeah. This is very boring. Yeah. Why is the male peacock so interesting? Right. What does that mean about who's choosing? The female. Females choosing. Exactly. Now, are are guys, human guys like that? No. Oh, I am. I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you know, hey. Who has seen a guy playing peacock? What? Let's pay, pay attention. Do we play peacock sometimes, guys? When you drive, that, that rich guy that drives a Ferrari in the parking lot and sits on top of it with the two chicks next to him and throwing money out the window. All right? The rapper that even, the rapper that not only does it but sings about doing it. All of that is just the peacock saying, look at me. All right? That's right. It's like, it's, 
it's like basically like saying, I don't have a big cock, so I gotta do all of this to attract you. That's what it's saying. Alright? That's what it's saying. Okay? Or, or, or it's not like, I don't have personality, I have to do all of this to attract you. Right? But, hey, 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 hey. This is why haters that don't have the money say. Because if I had the money, I'd be like, that's well. Actually, I would. If I was rich, hey, if I was rich, like filthy rich, the way that a lot of these rappers are rich, you know what I would do? I would come to school every day and be a teacher. And then on my time off, on my time, I'm serious. On my time off, I would use the money that I have and I'll make it my second job to give it away. Seriously, you know what Bill Gates does for a living? Do you know? He just breathes. Because Bill Gates has so much money that every second he makes $2,000. I want to understand this. Can you spend money that fast? Think about it. No. I mean, you, you walk into Sawgrass, you buy the ball, you still have some money left. Like seriously, Bill Gates could buy Sawgrass, the whole freaking thing, everything in it, and still have money left. Now, at that point, you don't need to work anymore. He could, if he spent a million dollars a year, all right, he would live, like think about it, he has $30 billion dollars. That's a million dollars a thousand times, 30 times. If he spent a million dollars per year, he could live 33,000 years. No, 30,000 years. And still make enough money. That's how much money he has. You know what he does for a living? He has, his has a foundation. He runs a foundation. And his foundation is giving money away. So he spends his day making sure that he gives money the best possible way possible. In the most productive way for society. That is an awesome job. He is doing this, but not at the hookers, right? Yeah. Not the ship. By the way, last year he spent he spent almost one hundred million dollars on shit. Like on shit. Like literally literally shit. Yeah. He's trying to come up with a better way to uh, flush the toilet. No, seriously, because some, remember we talked about the most, uh, the toilet is the thing that wastes the water the most at home? Yeah. So he's trying to figure out a, a waterless toilet for, so that Africans can have sanitation without water. No, 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 I mean, he's not pushing the poop, I'm just saying he's spending it on shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, yes. Hey! Guys, this is why I don't like sitting here, because I feel like you participate less when I'm around here, but... But I also don't want you guys talking over each other. But go ahead. Okay. Well, I do it with a dollar bill. And then Yes, you get it back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can do it with, I can do it with pennies. I can do it with pennies. Uh, I would say, I would even go as far as saying that I collect pennies. But if, it's, but if I say that too fast, people might misunderstand what I said. So I don't say that very often. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you missed it. You missed it, Kalu. You missed it. All right. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Let's go. On to Jenny. It's the, it's the time that it takes to go from birth to being able to to uh, reproduce. So think about humans. How long does it take us, minimal, to have babies? No, 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 no. For you to have a baby, how long does it take? No, 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 not minimal. No, not really. I, I don't want your girls to be sharing here, but you don't have to, but you know, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys have menstruated by now, right? And you guys are 13, 12, 14 years old. Now, I, right? But it'd be, it wouldn't be surprising if someone under 12 has. You can't, if you menstruated, can you have a baby? Yeah. Okay, so how is the minimal amount of time that it takes a human to actually get there? It depends, but on average, throw me a number. 
On average. Eight is a minimum, but like, throw me an average. Ten. Ten? Eleven? Yeah. More like a 12-year-old average, okay? But it's becoming earlier because, you know, chicken hormones and stuff. But having said it, now, guys, guys, raise your hands for spit. Okay. How long is it do you think it takes an elephant to be ready to have babies? One day. One year. A five-year-old, six-year-old elephant can have babies. How about a gorilla? Uh, I don't know. Five. Two years. <laughs> Two, three years you can have a baby. Okay? So why does it take us so long to have babies? Why? Because their bodies aren't ready yet. Why? No, hold on. But hey, hey. You should said it because our bodies aren't ready yet. She's right. But who who makes our bodies be ready? Our genes. Our genes. And who made the genes? No, 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 no. Who or what made the genes? Now, the genes you have today, why are they here? Have you learned nothing? Why does the complement of genes that's inside of you, in there, you, what process gave you these genes? What is this called? Evolution, okay. So evolution, show him. So evolution, not a person, uh, evolution, the process, made us wait 12 years to have babies, where other animals, including other primates, are maybe half that long. Why that? What's the pattern? What's happening? It, since, the, since the ancestors, have we increased ontogeny or decreased it? In, uh, ontogeny is the time it takes. Oh. Why? What, what, what's the advantage? Because it's got to be an evolutionary reason. What do you gain out of waiting? Why? Okay. Hold, hold on, hold on. So, hold on, let me ask this. Uh, Brandon, if you had a baby today, <laughs> first of all, they'll be very shocked. They'll be like, I'm a woman! Right? <laughs> Uh, but you know, in, in all seriousness, if you became a father, like, I'm pretty sure you could be a father. I almost 100% sure you could be a father. Right? No, because, because if, if any of us guys can have sperm, we can be fathers, yes? All right? So I'm pretty sure you could be a father. Now just think about that. Could you be biologically a father?
most people, you know, think that it's smart, you know, to you know, stop having babies before you're ready to have a baby, right? But I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the simple biology right here. Evolution made our bodies wait an extra six years compared to other apes, and even longer compared to other animals. Like, look at a bunny. A bunny can have babies in three months, right? You're born, three months later you can have children, and then, three, and then those children will be born in three months. Right? And I will look at things different. And we change the way we look at things. Now, I'm just talking about development. I'm actually in decline. My, my mental capacity is already in decline. While your guys are still improving your mental capacity. But I'm actually talking about mental capacity. You guys can't do certain things yet. Because you're not fully developed mentally yet. Are you with me you know what I'm saying? So if you try, so, but there are some of you guys, and I noticed for a fact, there are some of you guys that are smarter than I was when I was doing it, for sure. I have no doubt. When I remember I might remember myself in eighth grade and you guys right now, I know some of you guys are smarter than I am. Because I wasn't learning these things when I was in eighth grade. Right? And I, I couldn't even begin to understand. Right? I didn't. So some of the things I think you guys might be smarter than some of you guys might be smarter than I was. But for sure you're not as smart as I am. Why? Because I'm more developed. Are you with me? But so do you see waiting for that development to arrive has been advantageous because it makes you better parent. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Okay, let's move on. All right. Um, this, is a, this is an interesting one. Strength and agility. Have we, have we gained strength and agility compared to our, to our, uh, to our ancestor? No. Don't compare us to gorillas, people. Compare us to the ancestor of both us and gorillas. I'm uh, saying cavemen were stronger though. Yeah. Now, if you compare us to gorillas, they are stronger than us. If you compare us to monkeys, they are more agile than we are. Right? But we're not comparing us to monkeys and gorillas because they don't come from monkeys and gorillas. We come from something above us. And now, gorillas spent more effort on gaining strength. Now, don't think of it that way. Evolution of gorillas chose, chose strength. Strength was selected for in gorillas. Are you with me? Agility was selected for in chimpanzees. Have we become more agile than the Australopithecus afarensis? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have we become stronger than them? Perhaps. In some cases, not. But overall, we have not gained as much strength, agility, and speed as other primates have. Why not? Why have we sacrificed our gains here? Yes, both. Like? like exactly. I don't need speed. I have a truck. So I have even more speed. Hell, I have an airplane. Hell, I have a starship. Not yet. Not starship. I have a planetary ship. Right? Actually, not even. We don't really have planetary ships. We have a spacecrafts at the best. We have, like, shuttles that go to, like, outer space. We don't even go to, like, other planets yet. Right? We have probes that go to other planets, but there hasn't been a single interplanetary ship yet, much less interstellar, right? right? How do the probes get to other planets? Can we just send a human to the other planet? The problem is sustenance. They have to eat and breathe. All right, Shh. now, this is an interesting one. I like this one. Our gut, our intestines. What is your guess about how that has changed? The appendix is getting shorter, but compared to other gorillas, that's changed. But or yes, Ben, go ahead. What do you think? In fact, yes, we have underdeveloped intestines compared to other ones. Why are why don't we need longer intestinal tracts? Not even just that, something even more basic. I also look at um, Homo habilis, we think, we're the first one to do this. Something that allows us to, to stop investing energy in large intestines. Long intestines, sorry, I mean. What do we do to our food, people? No, more important than anything, we cook it. We cook it. Is there anything else that cooks food in nature? No. We are the only thing that cooks food. 
the only thing that cooks food. And because of that, we, we can make sacrifices. We don't need, or because our food is already broken down by cooking and cutting and stuff. We use tools to cut it. So we use tools to cut it. We use to cook it. What does that mean about our teeth? Do we need strong teeth like the gorilla do? Now, so what happens to our teeth compared to others? They're weaker. They're weaker, less developed. What happened to our maxillary bones? What happened to the size of our jaw? Because we're not needing that much energy anymore. Someday we'll eat protein from a machine and they won't even need mouse. Who knows? How about amount of hair? I, all right, first of all, skin color. This is an interesting one. I, I, this is a dangerous one. I love this one because if you guys have to guess the original skin color of human skin, how would black. black. But not the black that you think of black as in like uh, uh, African black. They're not, you're not talking like like very dark Central African black? Are you know what I'm talking about? A dark skin, yes. But not like that but dark. That is actually evolution from the early human. Early, you, you saw the pictures I showed you last class of the early humans. They weren't like black, black. They were like dark. We don't have anybody that color here. You know, so they're actually pointing it out. You know, but oh no, Sasha's a little too dark. No, seriously, she is. Now, which means the Africans that are dark today are actually darkened compared to the early humans. Are you what I'm trying to say? Now, why is there so many types of skin color? Was that because it's advantageous to be white in, in, in no, some places? No, it's just a mutation. It's just a mutation. And then the people with that mutation went to Europe. That's all there is to it. Are you with me? Now, today, color means even less because we have sex all over the place with everybody. Right? So, I guarantee you, we have like so much mixing around our species that there's, I mean, we look, just look at each other. We all have this, these mixtures. There, there's a few purebred humans in this classroom, I think. There's a few purebred here. You're definitely not purebred. Uh, she's a liger? Okay. How about, but, 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 but. We did, that was, so those are just mutations. But how about amount of hair, though? That's a pattern. What's this happening to our hair? We are naked monkeys. We have hair here, we have hair here, right? A little bit of hair here. Now, if you're a guy, maybe you have some hairy legs, right? Maybe a hairy chest. But as a, but why? Why less hair? Why less hair? Because we have very much hair. Clothing. Clothing. Very good. You can point to it. But give me another reason, by the way. There's another reason. Not just clothing. What? Not doing that. It's not too hard. Wait, what is hair for, primarily? Not just that. Also protection against the sun. Okay? So, by the way, did you ever get sunburn in your head? No. Now, on your scalp. It's hard to get sunburn in your scalp. But, I, I, I had this three years ago and I shaved all my head, my head up. Which I actually like, but now I keep it short. But when I had this, I actually got a sunburn once. Because I didn't ever realize I had to put sunscreen on my head. Why don't you have to put sunscreen on your head? Because you have already some sunscreen. Now, which is why there's still hair on top, because we're walking around in the sun. But the bills of you. Folks, right? Oh, here. Some other reason. Uh, so women have less than men. Yeah. Hint. What is the other reason? Sweat. Why is there here?
Gorillas are larger or smaller than humans? Gorillas, larger or smaller than humans? Larger. Their penis bigger or smaller than ours? Yes. Smaller. And especially in terms of proportional body size. What does that mean about our penis? Why is it big? Size matters or not? No. Wait, if it didn't matter, why is it bigger than the other ways? What is the extra size for? Do you think a small penis has trouble in disseminating? Not really. What is it for? It's to show off your mentalist. It's pretty much what it is. But why are they huge then? Like horse huge, like although there's a guy. There's a guy out there that has one, it just literally goes up here. Now, hey, hey. Most males, though, hey, most males, those are between five and six inches. Why isn't, why isn't the average penis size much larger if larger is more manly? Uh, yes? That's not the same. Now you do that, the king, this thing was just going around. We put clothes there. We put clothes there. Yes? If it was too big, then it got filled just. You and our children will be tripping over. It's uh, no longer U-shaped. 
Look at this. This is very cool. Right? That's why you can detach it. Look at the shape of our thing. What would you describe that shape? It's on the board. It's a parabola. Okay. Now let's look at the let's look at the uh, one of the Australopithecus. What shape is that? Why? Why is it no longer a U shape? Well, now it's a parabolic shape. What has changed? Our diet changed. We eat more omnivorous food. We eat more vegetables. We eat less meat, and that has caused us to have a more U shaped thing. We also cook our food like we talked about. All right. Uh, our shin is now flatter, right? We have like baby faces. You know how dogs have faces like that and young monkeys have faces like that? Our face never does what it's supposed to with other primates, which is what? All other mammals elongate as we get older. Ours doesn't, we just stay with the baby face. Because we have a mutation that that, that gene that elongates our jaw never turns on. We have it, it just never turns on. It's like a vestigial structure, are you with me? The gene is there, it just never turns on, so we don't actually have the long face. Which allows us to spend more energy building other, other structures, which, you know, has advantages. So we kept it. You know what I'm saying? And then, a lot of other biochemical processes have changed. I also wanted to point out, just before we actually go to talk about what we actually have to talk about today, which is um, uses of tools and technology. These are advancements that allow the humankind to make leaps. To make leaps. Okay, so if I think about the human history, the biggest leaps, right, if you can think of it, was the use of tools. So you think about fire, the wheel, the, uh, you know the physical science, the basic tools, simple yeah. machines, yeah. right? Yeah. That, and eventually advanced tools, like the technology that we have today, this sets us apart from other species. Do you think we're the only ones that use tools? Not exactly. Even dolphins, monkeys, gorillas, they use tools. But we have taken the technology and the use of tools to a, such an extreme that sometimes, we, we don't have something to protect us from the sun, but then we have air conditioning, right? So we don't need something to protect us from the sun. We don't, we don't have, uh, we have tools to hunt, we have tools to cook, and we have taken that to a level that no other species have taken. Certainly a huge advancement that allows us to dominate. Another thing that made us peculiar, very peculiar, no other species on earth does this. We grow our food. Every other species hunts or gathers. Are you with me? And what do we do? We grow it. That is a huge advancement, which is a byproduct of tools and technology, yes. But we grow it. And as soon as we start growing food, something interesting happens. We stop moving around. Because we don't need to go find food. We make the food where we are. And once we move around, we start talking to each other more. Even more than we already did before. And then, eventually, we have society, culture. That is a huge advancement. Because you see, now knowledge can pass across generations. Now, we can learn ways to do things, create habits, and form a group that all believes in these habits, and have these organized ways of doing things, where each person does a part of the whole, and nobody needs to be everything. Each person does a little bit, but contributes to the whole. Specialization increases efficiency. We don't have a doctor's lawyers, you know what, everybody. You don't do all the jobs, you do one job, right? But that is better, because specialization makes you more efficient which means as a group, we can do a lot more. Not only that, everything we learn, we pass on, we save. We, we, eventually, we have writing. Then something big happens. After writing, we have the Renaissance, the Illuminism. Writing spreads the knowledge. People start talking about it, start having ideas, and talking about ideas, and that sends into a cascade of science. And then, ultimately, we get the Industrial Revolution, a modernization of the way we do things. We no longer do things by hand, but we do machines to do everything, and assembly lines, and and now the work becomes easier because we don't do labor as much. Machines do it for us. We people go out of a job if they had basically basic skills because we don't build watches anymore. Watches are built by machines, so there's no watchmakers anymore. Only rarely, right? There's another one of those big ones coming. Now you remember you saw actually it's already came. I don't know if you realized, but tools was a big one. Fire, tools, uh, culture was a big one. Society was a big one. The Renaissance was a huge one. The Industrial Revolution was a huge one. The Computer Revolution is another one. Because this that has happened since the 70s, it's going to change society forever. I'm going to send you a video tonight that I want you guys to watch. If those of you are interested in this kind of stuff, it's about what the future holds for 
It's just that the jobs are, because remember, economy is based on the job. We buy things because we have salary. You understand that? But what if people didn't have jobs? Total chaotic economic, economic chaos. But the problem is, computers are going to take the jobs. All the jobs, eventually. You think the things are safe? This video is like about it. And nothing is safe. You understand, um, a lot of the news that you read today comes from places like Reddit, Facebook, right? Um, Twitter. You guys understand that the Facebook news feed that you get, no one writes it? No one writes that feed. No one creates the feed for you. Why does the feed show up there? Who put the feed there for you? So there is a computer writing your news. He's a reporter now. Are you with me? Give me a, give me a, a what do you want to be? What do you want to be, Sophia? You have any idea? It's okay if you don't. What? Okay, so when you go to the doctor, the first thing that happens is you sit in a place and you tell someone your symptoms, and then that person goes over your symptoms, thinks about what kind of problems you may have, orders a few tests, the tests are done on you, and then they analyze the results of the test against the database inside his head, and decides the most likely diagnosis is this, this is the pill that you have. I have no idea why a computer can't do that. So I can do that. It's just an algorithm. All right? Surgery. You think about cutting someone open. There's no way that's going to be replaced. Because, you know, it's such a delicate procedure. I had, I had a surgery done inside of me. No one ever opened me up. They went to the computer. They typed some, some, some things. Color coded the part of the brain that needed to be burned. They pressed a button. And then uh, a surgery was made on me. It was late. So I didn't need a brain. So that was a brain surgeon that didn't do their job that day. Better for me though, because I'm still here with all stars. So maybe by the time you or your children grow up, there will be no brain surgeon. There will be no need brain surgeon. That's not a replacement. Right? I think 90% of the work lawyers do is reading emails, cataloging information, gathering data from different places. Computers can do that. Statisticians, computers can do that. Accounting, computers can do that. All right? So, give me a, what's your parents' job? Teacher? How do you learn in this class? By the internet. Podcasts. All right? Well, I need you to do this learn. But this is a fine learning. It's way beyond what we learn in the past. Now, and then we all do activities together, and I'll help you guys together. So it's more than just that. But the, just the delivery of information, do you need me for that? No. My job is already bought. All the teachers don't realize it. I don't realize it. This job is dead. 20, 30 years? Why do you need this? You just need a facilitator. Someone that just like sits there, while people do labs and things. But school is going to change a lot. I don't know if America's haven't caught the drift yet. But other people around the world have already caught the drift. You don't need a teacher to teach content. Right? It's interesting. The computer revolution is changing everything, and people don't realize it, but transportation. <laughs> transportation, right? Driving from one place to the other. It's soon we we're going to have automatic vehicles. Like 20, 30 years tops, vehicles will drive themselves. Truck drivers, uh, people that work in ports, all the people that drive boats, all the people that drive planes, all the people, everything that has to do with driving, all our jobs. Think about that. Mm. Now, if you, if, in uh, 2005, there was a problem in the economy, and then about 11% of the American population was unemployed. And it was a big problem for the economy. Yeah. Over, almost 20% of people in the American economy work with something to do with transportation. Yeah. Take away the teachers, take away the lawyers, take away the accountants, take away everything. Reporters. In this video that I'm going to show you to you guys, which is, I already sold half the story of the video for you guys, but still worth watching it. And this video that I sent to you guys, in the background of the video, I'm ruining the best punchline of the video, but I'm still going to do it. In the, the background of the entire video is a music play, a song play. All right? And at the very end of the video, it says, a computer wrote that. Because that's the craziest thing people don't understand. People say, creativity is safe, because computers can't create. Yes, they can. This is just a computer. And not a good one either. You're still trying to say it. 
That's not fun. On our way to Skynet. On our way to Skynet. Fucking true. All right. So, uh, now that we are depressed, all right, we obviously only have five minutes before. Uh, uh, we're not gonna have a quiz today, okay? But, but hey, hey, hey. Hey, if you're, I, I'm actually worried about something else, though. Hey, quiet. I'm worried about something else, though. And I did have fun talking to you guys about stuff, but uh, we missed classification day one. Now, let me look at the calendar and see how that affects things. Um, we do have a flex day. If worst case scenario, we can dump something into that. But, yes, so classification day one would be the 17th. And the 19th, instead of being just a flex day, will be the practice day for classification. Uh, I only need about... 20, 30 minutes to, to, to talk about what I need to talk about classification, but I, I want to point out something to you guys to help you be prepared for next class because I, I'm going to have to rush when I talk about classification. So make sure you guys do this. All right, guys, you got to turn in your folders with the work in them. You have to have the answers for the questions, okay? Uh, uh, I'm going to give you a point depending on how well you answered. And including the bottom, and I was talking about society and things. Everything you answered is points. Put it on your photos. Christopher Dorta, put this in the photo, please. But you got to put this stuff inside of it, too. So just keep it folded put it here. They're over here, guys. The photos are over here. Turn it in. Wait, what is the thing called? What's the thing called?